Hello, and welcome back to Season 7, Episode 3. I'm your host, Tyler Snyberg. And I'm Michaela Dobby, and I'm excited to be here discussing everything map and volleyball. Well, way to spoil this fun <laughs> sport. Anyways, we've got a packed episode today, diving into the world of map and volleyball, a recap of the fall season, and more. So be sure to stick around. Absolutely, Tyler. So let's talk volleyball. The boys' vo volleyball team at Mepham had an impressive season, and we're here to break it all down. That's right, Michaela. The boys' team finished 11-5 and in what was for sure an exciting season. Despite losing some talent to seniors from last year, the boys found a way to win some games and fell just short of a playoff berth. Definitely a great season nonetheless. Tyler, what were some of your takeaways from this season? Yeah, it was definitely an interesting season nonetheless, right? You lose guys like your studying setter, Sean McQuillan. You lose your outside hitter, you have Sean Seligman. We lost a lot of seniors that were definitely really talented. But the interesting about this year was, of course, you had Thomas Wilderman, who, you know, is a prodigy. I mean, he, I, I wish I could say words that would describe how talented he is at the game of volleyball. But we also have a lot of other players. Connor Milet, who was a starting outside. We have two very talented mid middles and BB's own Luke Yepes. And then we also have Ryan Triano. I mean, back row, Jolo as a libero. There was a lot of amazing talents and amazing players that definitely, I would say, helped guide us. And of course, we fell just short of a playoff berth. It was uh, an interesting race between us, Oceanside, and East Meadow. And East Meadow, of course, ended up going really far in the playoffs. But, you know, I wouldn't change a thing about it. It was definitely, we had a talented team. and. And I was just happy that I was able to spend one last season with the boys. So I mean, it was always exciting, like watching your games, like seeing everything, like you guys accomplished as a team. I mean, Thomas Wilderman, an amazing player, but your whole team around, like so much chemistry. You guys just played so well together. Yeah, it was definitely a great season, nonetheless. And I'm also very curious about the future of this team too, right? The majority of the people that were starting were seniors, right? The only guys that you have that run the class, and of course, you have Kyle McQuillan, who will be the setter next year. He had an amazing year this year. And, you know, Coach Gordon hopes that he can learn maybe just a little bit more about the position, get a little more comfortable. And then you also have, you have the starting middle, Luke Epez, again, who will be coming back. But besides that, it's, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, all of your hitters, for the most part, were seniors that are gone. Your starting libero, gone. He's a, he's a senior. And then a lot of your DSs as well, your defensive specialists, are also gone that are seniors. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what Gorman wants to do with this team for the future, how they use some of their, you know, juniors. And, of course, we have the incoming sophomores that, you know, there's a few talented ones. So... You know, I'm definitely curious to see what she does, but nonetheless, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Mepham Volleyball, just as a program, like it's always growing, it's always expanding. Like a class graduates, and we miss them so much. But Mepham Volleyball is one of the sports in Mepham that I feel like it just keeps going and keeps evolving and keeps even getting better. Yeah, it's, it's for sure, right? I mean, we've seen this program, we've seen success in the district before. You always talk about Kennedy, right, who have had multiple state championships for the girls' side, the boys as well you know, in the early 2010s, had a lot of deep runs. And then you look at Calhoun as well, who continuously make playoffs this season, an unbelievable season with one loss, and then decide to go really deep in the playoffs. So they had a great situation there. So, you know, Mepham's due at this point, right? Now it's, we've seen what the other schools can do. Now we have to answer back. We have to show up and, and, and kind of, you know, I guess live up to our standards that we want to set for ourselves. And we have the talented team to do that, so. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. But Tyler, I'm really going to miss seeing you on that Mepham volleyball court. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know, as a senior, it, it definitely felt weird, of course, putting on that jersey one last time when we played Oceanside. It, it sucks still, I'm not going to lie, it hasn't really hit in yet. I don't think it will ever, actually. But, you know, it, it's it's something that i got to get used to eventually, and, and, and I'm definitely missing some practices. I'm missing the game days. I'm missing all of it, so, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe, like, you're going to graduate this year, and it's not going to be on the map and volleyball court again. I had to say the word graduate, did you? I'm sorry. Anyways, you know, all this boys' volleyball talk is really making me feel old right now. Well, why is that? I don't know. It's just all this last time in a Mepham Jersey talk makes me miss the team that much more. Only if there's a way to go back in time and, I don't know, see what goes on during those practices. Well, lucky for you, there is a way, but I'm guessing you knew that, didn't you? Well, without further ado, let's see what the Mepham boys' volleyball team has to say on this month's episode of Mic'd Up. You're such a bully for no reason. Uh oh, heads up. Oh! Think about it. Hey. Hey, you trash as <laughs> Hey, I'm over here. Oh, that's breakfast. I go! Oh, oh, cover! 
Got her! Got her! Tyke! Oh. I didn't even oh. go up. Trash <laughs> ass. Man, I missed that team. Well, look at the bright side, Tyler. I still have one year left. Wow. I see how it is. Well, don't worry, because when you come home from college and you visit, you could just come watch my games. That makes me feel so much better. I'm also not going to address the fact that you just said college. On a more positive note, Mel Larcos got a chance to sit down with one of your teammates, actually, Sam Bremer, on this month's episode of The View. Thanks guys, and welcome back to The View. My name is Melanie Arcos, and today I'm here with Sam Bremer. How are you doing today, Sam? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, so, I know that you guys had an incredible volleyball season this year, but could you tell me a little bit more about how it went down? Yes, so um, we made it to county finals this year. We had a really great season through and through. We had a rough start for sure. Uh, we <laughs> lost like our first six games. <laughs> but we came back and we finished, I think, with like a record, I want to say, of like six and nine or something around there. And um, yeah, we really came together and clutched up. So it was super fun and exciting. That sounds amazing. So with all the games that you guys play, what was one game that really stood out to you? So one game that stood out to me in particular was our match against Syosset. Um, it, was, it wasn't home, it was there at their school. And it just so happened that that day we had, I think, three of our main starters who couldn't make it. So we had other people filling in, our whole team got to play, and it was a really like team bonding experience. And it showed off that you know, not just the starters like could make a difference and everybody could. So it was really great. And um, we went to five, like five sets. Um, we lost match point, but it was it was really an exciting game for sure. Yeah, that sounds like a really amazing game. I wish I could have been there. Yeah. Um, but overall, as a season, with being how far that you guys got, what makes you love the sport as so much as the whole? Um, so one thing about volleyball that I just love is the fact that um, it's a team effort and it's a team sport. So it's not only about you as an individual, but it's about everybody making a difference. Um, you know, I was like a captain. I play club. I, I was a captain of my club team before. I know what it's like, you know, to feel down and have other teammates feel down. And you always have your teammates there to like back you up and bring you up. So I think that's like really great about it. Yeah, that's always such a great relationship to have with your team. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the team, what was something that got you all ready for the, those really important games during the season? So funny enough, um, we had uh, this song, Remember. Uh, it was like <laughs> our song and we would always listen to it to hype us up during our warm up time. We would always play it and it just got us so hype and it, it really like brought the connection between us and the team. So it was great. Yeah, I love that song too. <laughs> so. Um, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to the next season, next year? Um, next year, I'm definitely looking forward to improvements, and hopefully we can, um, you know, go even further next year, which would be great. Um, you know, I think that we have a really great, we have a great set of juniors. I think a lot of our starters were juniors this year, um, and I think that, you know, we're going to make it really far in next season. So. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do next yeah. year. Um, so if you had, if you were able to play a different position, any position, what position would you play? Hmm. I would definitely be a setter. Uh, I love setting so much. I actually started playing volleyball as a setter, but uh, that quickly changed as I was <laughs> not built for that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely love to play as a setter because I think it's so fun. Um, and yeah, I have pretty good hands, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does sound fun. So I can't wait to see what you guys do next year. So thank you so much, Sam, for being on the show with of me. Of course. Uh, that's all for me. I'm Melanie Arcos. Now back to you guys in the studio. Yeah. Thanks, Mel. Isn't Sam Bremer just the best person ever? Not quite. Oh, I should have known you were going to say something, Tyler. But you know, Tyler, the girls did have a great season, though. Definitely. An overall record of 8-10 and 10 with a magical run in the playoffs. I'd say that's a success. So, Michaela, what were some of your takeaways this season? I don't know. I just thought we had a really good season. I mean, our team gelled so well together. Although we were in a really tough conference, so our conference play was very hard. I mean, we were the other top seven girls volleyball schools in Nassau County. 
once we got to the playoffs, we had a great run. We beat Gar uh, Great Neck South 3-0, and then we played a crazy game against Elmont. The tensions were high. Everyone was excited. We won that one 3-1, and you know we got to the county finals. And I mean, it really just wasn't our day. It was really disappointing. But I mean, that was the end to our run there. Um, you know, Long Beach did go on to make it to stage, so congratulations to them. But I mean, it, w it was a heartbreaker for us. I mean, we worked so hard, we put so much into it. But all we could say now is we could reflect on what we, you know, maybe didn't do our best, and we could put that into next year. And you know, we're gonna come out strong next year, but we are losing some key pieces, Tyler. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you guys had, had an extremely talented team, made a very deep run in the playoff. But players like Sophia Green, you have Fiona Casucci, you know, those are two starters that you have right green. I mean, she can do literally everything on the court that you want her to do. And then Fiona is, you know, I believe you guys ran a 6-2, and she was one of the setters that you guys had, of course, you being the other one. So those were two, you know, very important players. And you also talk about the, guy, the people that you have returning. I mean, of course, you have yourself. You have players like Bremer, players like Rako is one of the top players that, you know, we have the honor of watching. You know, those players, you guys are going to be in great, great hands for the rest of your years. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just going to be so different being on the court without those seniors. Like, I mean, Sophia Green, there would be a volleyball I thought would hit the floor, and I look up, and it's up in the air, and I see Sophia Green, and she got it up. I mean, Fiona Kasuchi, we're going to miss her, her great setting. Grace Glynn, I loved running, like, fun setting plays with her. I mean, Liv Meyer and uh, Mel Mel Melissa Hellman, I mean, they were just, they were great players, and it was just people that you want on your team so much, and... We do have a great team coming into next year. Most of our starters will be returning, and I just I can't wait to see what we do next year. Yeah, I mean, you guys are extremely, extremely talented. Of course, you lost to a Long Beach team. That was definitely rough, but mm -hmm. I got to ask. We all knew that you guys were talented, but what was going through your minds, of course, when you had that deep playoff run? The deep playoff run, I mean, it was all season. We played such hard competition, and we knew once we get to playoffs, like that hard competition, it really helped us prepare. I mean, we tried so many different lineups and everyone just played such a positive role in the team. Everyone got along. We just, on the court, we had the chemistry and, you know, I feel like that all really helped us to have that great playoff run that we went so far on. I mean, making it all the way to county finals. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you guys ended up playing the best of the best that Nassau County has to offer. And I mean, you guys took it like a champ in a sense. And of course, the deep playoff run, it definitely reflected that. So congratulations on the amazing season. Thank you. You know, all this talk about girls volleyball, it's kind of getting me hype right now. I don't know. I miss the big games, the big moments, especially that boys volleyball game against Freeport. Well, Tyler, then you're in luck because Jake Mano and Matt Nadoff created this month's sports highlight video. So let's take a look. As the sun goes down and the lights shine pink in the Mapham Gym, the newly developed Red Devils program is set to take on the dominant and well-established Pirates in their senior night. As the season winds down, on one side, the 9-4 Mapham teams are fighting for their playoff spot, and they take up the court in a highly anticipated matchup. Under the leadership of the seniors, the Pirates started off with a commanding 12-3 lead out of the gates. Unfortunately for Mapham, the Red Devils wouldn't go down that easy, following several momentum shift in plays by their offensive leader, Melvin Velasquez. But despite Freeport racking up points, Mepham pulled too far ahead under the powerhouse duo of junior setter Kyle McQuillan and kill frontier Thomas Wilderman, ending the first set in dramatic fashion 27-25. In the second set, Mepham didn't slow down as they dominated early taking a 6-0 lead. But their reign of terror would come to an end shortly after as the Red Devils would not surrender creating opportunities for themselves and keeping the game close. However, this set was under the control of senior Connor Mylad as he ended the set shortly after growing the Pirates' lead of two sets to zero. As the third set was well underway, both teams went back and forth, being tied until the 15th point of the set, where Giancarlo Rivera took control. This Red Devils run was short-lived due to Thomas Wilderman's game-altering performance as he dominated the rest of the game and ultimately closed out the win for the Pirates. What a game. As for the Pirates, they moved to 10-4, are in prime position for a playoff spot. For b, &B I'm Jake Mano. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That was a great game for the Pirates, getting the 3-0 win within some style in some of those great plays. That's right. Well, 
That's all we have Tyler, for you. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. We still have one more segment. Oh, yes. How could I forget? It's time for the BNB Play of the Month, where we show you the best clip that our cameras were able to capture. With the fall season in the rearview mirror, it's only right that we recap the best plays that this season that weren't recognized. Dallas has been on the team since the start as a huge, powerful set, or spike, sorry, by Thomas Wildeman. She had 100 last season on the die as we are back to game action. Captain Ashley Felsberg. And Felsberg's some we're not counting. Once again. On Ashley Felsberg day. Get the shot to go and, and off the post. post. Oh, it's done. All of these girls have amazing jump serves. I can't remember the last time I saw one standing serve. Look at that amazing swing by Sam Ricos. We see an Ooh. opportunity and Gavin's going to make a great save. So it's going to be snap and the shotgun. Trying to find a man, it's going to be caught just short of the first down. This fall season was definitely one to remember. For sure, but don't worry, we still have the winter and spring sports season. Yep, so be sure to tune into next month's episode of Sports Talk. But until then, I'm Michaela Dobby. And I'm Tyler Steinberg, and we'll see you all next month.